Hey everybody, Jeff here, Aromatics. So it's 2019, starting a new year. And it's been nice watching everybody do their end of the year videos and their top five and top 10 tobaccos and such. And uh, I thought I would do some as well because it's been a very interesting year. Probably the best year for me as far as enjoying my tobaccos. Previous years, I was still kind of new and trying new blends and learning the whole hobby and stuff like that. It's a complex, there's a lot to learn um, for sure. And I'm a little bit of a slow learner, but this year for sure was definitely a great year for just enjoying the summer. I really enjoyed the summer and had a chance to, to really enjoy my pipe and uh, also my cigars. Uh, this is the first year uh, I did my cigar journal and just tried a bunch of different cigars and I'll be coming out with a top five cigar video as well soon and just some other stuff that I learned since it was my uh, before this year I really didn't know much about cigars so uh, I learned quite a bit I'd like to discuss that so yeah I see a bunch of other uh, pr YouTube presenters that haven't been making a lot of videos have been really busy the last month or so like uh, Ben Old Soul Piper and even Derek Tant and a few others so it's nice to see those guys back at it again and yeah so it's kind of encouraged me to get uh, back into uh, the swing of things it's really cold here so it's not as easy to make outside videos so I kind of set things up in here a little bit and hopefully I can bang out a few videos that I have planned yeah uh, including this one so let's get started shall we so Five tobaccos that I found that were interesting this year, not necessarily my top, de definitely not my top five F ever, but five tobaccos that I found pretty much this year and really enjoyed this year and thought I would share it with you. Now, word of warning, uh, my palate is pretty rough compared to a lot of the other presenters out there. I know a lot of um, people really like the high-end blends like the Dunhill Flakes and the McClellan's, Virginia's. I seem to just have a more working man, rough tobacco type of palette. I really like strong blends, rough blends, um, blends that you can just really taste, even if it's a little on the rough side. I, it's just the way it is. So a lot of my tobaccos might not be classified as, you know, like as well looked upon as some of these uh, other blends, but this is just me sharing what I like and maybe some of you uh, have a similar palette to me. So anyway, here we go. I will start um, in no particular order. Now the first one would be, let's see, what should I share first? How about Cornell and Deal's Afternoon Delight from the Working Man series. Now this one, I just kind of got on a whim. Uh, I really enjoy maples and I've tried a bunch of them and they really either are not tasty enough for me or they bite me. So um, I definitely, Autumn Evening is definitely my favorite, but I was just on a whim, I was searching and I saw like a maple and uh, I came across Afternoon Delight. So I thought, eh, I'll try it. I didn't have high expectations. I thought it would be just sort of an aromatic or something where you couldn't really taste the maple or who, I didn't know what I expected, but not much. But uh, I took a chance. And as soon as I took that first puff, oof, it hit me like, wow, this is not what I expected. This is a really strong burly with a little bit of Latakia very full flavored and that maple just takes the edge off you can definitely taste it it's not really sweet but it's just gives it a thick like thickens it up and takes the edge off of some of those burleys and uh, orientals and latakia that might otherwise be a little bit rough really enjoy this this blend uh, i haven't smoked enough of it to really get the full to see if it bites me or not but it's still worth mentioning so some blends, this one, I have a feeling that I can only smoke so much of it at a time or it'll just kill my palate, but I'm not sure. I have got so many different blends this year that uh, I didn't get a chance to fully flesh this one out. It's still worth mentioning. Cornell and Deals, Afternoon Delight. And another one uh, in the same category um, or the same series, Working Man series, is Cornell and Deals, Five O'Clock Shadow. This one is a dark fired with Red Virginia and some Preek. And I already did a review on it. And you'd think with those three, those three tobaccos, it would be sort of a sweeter blend, but it's not. It's very almost Cajun-y, dry, um, and a little bit spicy. So I compared it to a Dorito chip, like a, like a um, sweet chili heat. 
type of Dorito and this one just I actually started I got this one a week or so after I got the afternoon delight and I just found that although I like that one too this one I just just kept my interest more so this one I smoked a lot of got a bunch more tins really enjoy it no bite lots of flavor if you like it and if you like the spicy stuff very uh, very nice tobacco oh what else did I get here ah yes Russ's Russulette's Firestorm. This one was one I've been wanting to try for a long time, but I couldn't get my hands on it because Pipe and, Pipes and Cigars does not ship to Canada. But I had a friend uh, from the YTPC, Pipe and Beans. Uh, he was nice enough to send me, uh, get me a tin and send it to me so I could try it and I love it. Uh, it's basically a vapor, Virginia Perique, with a good helping of Dark Fired Kentucky. And I think there's a bit of a, t a topping on there as well because it's uh, maybe a little bit of cinnamon and maybe some molasses. It really reminds me of a Scudo, a nice aged, sweet, plummy, at first anyway, Virginia Preak, and then as you go down the bowl, the cinnamon picks up and the spice picks up. So it changes, it's complex, it's sweet, it's spicy, it's Virginia forward, it's just very good, very good blend. No bite as well. Um, I'm hoping to get more. I asked TobaccoPipes.com if they could get some, and they said they would, so we'll see if that pans out. Um, I hope so, because I would love to get more of this. Okay, how about Low Country Gwendolos? Now, the story behind this is, if you people watch my channel, you would know that, or you might know that I like cigars, and I like cigar blends or pipe tobaccos with cigar leaf in it. Some of my favorites are Billy Bud, Blonde, Billy Bud, Habana Daydream, Purple Cow, those types of blends. And um, I saw that this Gwendolos was similar. So it is basically it kind of has everything in it. But what makes it uh, really stand out is the, what's it called? Catamara, not Catamari, but um, Caterini which is sort of a spicy type of leaf. And also it has some, uh, and the cigar leaf. So other than that, it's got your Red Virginias and Perique and stuff, but it's a very, it's got very complex, lots of different flavors, which I bet would uh, age very well. Now this one I enjoy because it's probably the most, of the non Latakia blends, it's probably the most cigar forward. It still not taste, still doesn't taste like a cigar but it just has a lot of cigar in it. So when I'm in the mood for a nice, strong, spicy, cigar-y blend with some complexity, I go for this. I really enjoy it. So Low Country Gwendolos. That's a Smoking Pipes house blend, by the way. I think it's made by Cornell and Deal for them. And what else we have? Last but not least in my top five, I have Cornell and Deal. A lot of Cornell and Deal here, I see. Practically all the ones so far. Have been Cornell and Deal. It's just the way it is, I guess. Uh, this one is Opening Night, and this is just a fantastic, in my opinion, straight, not straight, well, straight Virginia. It's a bright Virginia and a red Virginia pressed in, into a flake. Just real simple. I don't think there's any um, Cavendishing or anything like that. Just two straight tobaccos. And I know that this year was really big with the whole Vir with Virginias, especially for me, and I noticed with a lot of other uh, Pipers out there as well, they're mentioning Virginia's, probably because of the McClellan's going under. So people were trying a lot of different um, Virginia's just to see what they could find to take the place of the ones that were lost because of the McClellan's going under. So, and in the previous, in the past, I had very little luck with straight Virginia's. I just couldn't get any taste out of them. And I thought it was probably my palate wasn't refined. But actually, I think it was just the tobaccos I was buying. I bought a lot of popular bulk blends, uh, and I just found that I wasn't getting any taste or all I was getting was hot air and tongue bite. But this was one of the first Virginias that I got that I could taste. It was really flavorful. You could really taste the brights on the one side and the reds. It's got some bready notes, a little bit of citrusy and earth and no tongue bite for me. And it comes in a nice flake, it'll age well, smokes great out of the tin. I was really happy with this and this got the ball rolling for me for the rest of the year in trying out some more Virginias and really enjoying them. And uh, so that, yeah, so after that I started getting other 
um, more higher end or just trying different Virginias and finding ones that I could actually taste. Um, so now I'm enjoying even stuff like the Sutliff's 515 and what else? Just uh, there's other ones that I, I am enjoying, but that was probably one of my, and still is, was my first and still probably my favorite pure Virginia. So, okay, that's my basic top five. And I have a couple little, a uh, couple honorable mentions uh, here. One of them is, of course, the Cornell and Deals Small Batch Carolina Red Virginia. Now, I got this late in the year, so I haven't smoked it enough to decide. Like, I know it'll definitely be in my top five for next year, but I just didn't want to put it in my top five yet because it's just so new to me. But this is a great... I didn't I didn't think I was. I would like it, honestly. Um, at first, I... I didn't taste much, but then as I smoked more, it changes. You get a whole bunch of different flavors. Sometimes it's acidic, sometimes it's sweet, sometimes it's spicy, sometimes it's earthy, sometimes it's bready. And it's just a really interesting and fairly fairly strong blend for a Virginia, for a straight red Virginia even. So um, I just wish I would have got more. I had the opportunity to get more than the three tins that I did, but I wasn't thinking ahead. I just, I didn't know if I would like it. And then I forgot that maybe other people out there would want to like I would love to share it with other people so I just wish I would have gotten a lot more of it when I did but that's the way it goes uh, so definitely like that one um, another one it's actually an aromatic uh, it's I found myself it's an oldie but a goodie I found myself smoking it a lot when I just wanted that old school marshmallow taste uh, that's just something that will always stick with me when I first used to smell pipe or when I first smelled pipes, I always remember that marshmallow sweet smell, and that just stuck with me. And the Lane's RLP6 is that one for me. I just found myself when I'm not smoking the other arrows that I like, like uh, say Autumn Evening, which is definitely my favorite. I found myself just going back to RLP6, just a great sweet marshmallowy, burly uh, with a little bit of Virginia in there. It doesn't bite. Uh, just a, a really straightforward, old school aromatic. Love it. So next year, I think I'll definitely be continue on, continuing on smoking um, Virginias and trying them out. And um, I enjoyed a lot of Burleys this year too, but I haven't found it. I still have to experiment to find out which ones I can smoke all the time because a lot of them just, um, they just bite me or burn up my palate. Don't know why. But um, a couple of honorable mentions. I've got the Burley, HH uh, Burley Flake, and I actually picked up the other day some Solani uh, aged Burley Flake, which they seem to have here in Canada still. So I think that's a little bit rare. Um, Peter Stokeby's Cube Cut is a, is a real easy to find one that I really found myself enjoying. St. Bruno, uh, we got some, a couple other ones that I was smoking that are classics, but new to me because people sent them to me is some Escudo. Um, and some Orlick Golden Sliced. So those are some honorable mentions. So I'm going to cut my video off there. It's been pretty long. Uh, hope you guys enjoyed it. And um, yeah, so look forward to a few more indoor videos coming up. I got some uh, cigar ones, and then I've actually got a new thing I want to try, and it's because um, I'm always coming off positive with my stuff, but I got some tobaccos that I'm actually going to do some negative reviews just for fun. So all right, I'll uh, talk to you guys later, and I enjoyed uh, enjoy going to enjoy watching more of uh, your guys' stuff. So if you want, subscribe and leave a comment. Talk to you later. Aromatics, signing out.